Hey guys, I'm back with episode two of my Napoleon journey. Napoleon, um, content wars and chronological order journey. Guys, I'm gonna make a place for all of these reaction videos. You guys wondering what ones I've done and want to keep up with the with the reactions that I'm doing because um, I post quite a bit and I know for some of you guys, it might you might miss a few. But yeah, check the description if you're wondering what playlist uh, videos I've done. There'll be a playlist in the description. But guys, look, we are on episode two. So this is Napoleon in Italy, Battle of Lodi, Lodi or Lodi, 1796. For those of you that saw my first reaction to Napoleon, look, I was like, how is this guy with no, you know, a novice? who's so young gonna actually galvanize the troops. I didn't have faith in him in the beginning, but it looks as if he's pulled off an absolute madness and he might be on the start of an incredible run. Now, I don't know anything much about this history. I'm learning about this for the very first time. I've only seen one video from Epic History. Um, so now I'm gonna watch this, a second one. But guys, look, of course, smash the like button if you guys wanna see more. And of course, don't forget to check out Epic History channel for more of this kind of content if you wanna see about skips and pauses and whatnot. Um, but yeah, guys, look, that being said, let's get straight into this video. Let's go. Epic History TV, PMF Productions, collaboration. In 1796, at the height of the French Revolutionary Wars, a young French general took charge of a ragged, demoralized army in northern Italy. It was his first command. Many expected him to fail. Instead, in just one month, he won his first brilliant campaign. With astonishing self-confidence, boldness and energy, he led his army to victory after victory. Insane. Transforming the war in Europe, winning praise from a grateful republic, and forging a legend. This is the story of Napoleon Bonaparte's first campaign, and the dawn of a new age. I still can't get over how one guy almost killed him in battle, and that could have changed history. 1792. <clears throat> Europe is plunged into conflict by revolution in France. Revolution. At first, it seems this infant republic will be quickly snuffed out by her neighbors. Incredibly, France clings on, thanks to mass mobilization, patriotic fervor, and her traditional military power. In 1795, France occupies the Low Countries, while Prussia and Spain withdraw from the war. But the French Republic still faces okay, well, a powerful so coalition so of a whole different like, Prussia, like I don't know that country. I'm guessing it's Russia before Russia. But yeah, this, this is a whole different kind of layout with the map as well. Shout out to history. This is insane. Austrian Mies, Empire. Which includes the Austrian Empire and kingdoms of Piedmont, Sardinia, Naples, and Great Britain. As well as a counter-revolutionary revolt in the Vendée region of Western France. In Paris the most extreme revolutionaries had been toppled, sent to the guillotine, as they had sent so many before them. France is now governed by the Directory, a more moderate five-man committee, which quickly wins a reputation for corruption and inefficiency. Wow. Nevertheless, in 1796, they plan a major military offensive to knock their most dangerous adversary, Austria, out of the war. Uh -oh. The two main efforts will be made along the Rhine by powerful armies under General Jourdan and General Moreau. A third effort, of which much less is expected, will be made in northern Italy. The French army of Italy is a poor cousin, starved of money and supplies, stripped of troops to reinforce French forces on the Rhine. But its fortunes are about to change. On the 2nd of March, 1796, no the Directory appoint a new commander to lead the army. No one of France's youngest generals, Napoleon, Napoleon Bonaparte. Oh, no way! You're telling me he's gonna... He's gonna revolutionize this whole third army of France, the, the, the Italian-French troops, or the French-Italian troops, whatever. This is gonna be insane if he, how he does this. 
saying the general's most important talent is to know the mind of a soldier and gain his confidence he is not a machine that must be made to move he is a responsible being who needs leadership now that is a quote even i'm getting Napoleon arrives at the Army of Italy's headquarters in Nice on the 25th of March. He is just 26 years old. 26, man. Two years have passed since he masterminded French victory at the Siege of Toulon. Yeah. Since then, his fortunes have been mixed. A short spell as artillery commander in Italy. Really? Ten days in jail when his political patrons fell from power. Really? He then refused to serve in the Vendée, fighting French counter-revolutionaries, leading to several months' unemployment in Paris. Wow. Then, an extraordinary break. Obviously, it wasn't. It wasn't just like oh, just things were just fly, starting with flying colours. Okay, it sounded like it started off bad. Thirteen Vendémiaires, Paris. A royalist mob threatens to storm the national government. Napoleon is the closest general to hand and put in charge of its defence. He disperses the crowds with brutal efficiency and is acclaimed saviour of the revolution. Wow. A grateful directory promotes Napoleon to general of division and awards him command of the army of Italy. Crazy, just like that. On the 9th of March, he marries his great love, Josephine de Beauharnais, and leaves for the front two days later. Okay. There are French generals in Italy with a better claim to command than Napoleon. Okay. Serrurier, a professional soldier who first saw action in the Seven Years' War, a decade before Napoleon was born. Wow. Wow. Augereau, a tough, experienced soldier, bold tactician and committed Republican. And Massena, Risen from the ranks, fearless, tireless, <coughs> hero of the Battle of Loano against the Austrians the year before. Oh, wow. All three would later become marshals of Napoleon's empire. Wow, marshals. For now, Napoleon seems to these veterans, young and underqualified, a political appointment, embarrassingly infatuated with his new wife. Wow. <laughs> but there is something about the Corsican. As Massena observed, his small size and puny face did not put him in their favour. But as soon as he donned his general's hat, he seemed to grow by two feet. Wow, that's a quote. Napoleon impresses above all with his tireless energy. And he has much to do. His army is organised into Massena's advance guard of two divisions, one led by a hard-fighting Swiss general, La Harpe, and the other by Menier, whom Napoleon soon decides is incompetent. The main body comprises the divisions of Augereau, Serrurier, and two smaller divisions under Macquart and Garnier. The cavalry is led by General Stengel. But the army of Italy has been shockingly neglected by the Directory. The men are hungry and unpaid, with a few units on the verge of mutiny. I can imagine. Some men don't even have shoes or muskets. Napoleon inspects the troops and studies reports. He enforces discipline and breaks up rotten units. He is assisted by his aide-de-camp, Junot, Marmont, and a dashing cavalry colonel, Joachim Murat. I can't lie, yo, As French names go so hard. Like, Junot, Marmont, like, they just... It just, they just hit hard, man. And a dashing cavalry colonel, Joachim Murat. Murat. As emperor, Napoleon will make two of these men dukes, and one a king. Oh, wow. His most valuable assistant is his new chief of staff, General Berthier who helps him to reorganize the army's supply system and scour southern France for food, transport and forage. The situation begins to improve. But Napoleon knows what will really rejuvenate his ragged divisions. Victory in battle and the promise of plunder. Right. Yo, he's got a handful to do with Napoleon, man.
<clears throat> I want to lead you into the into the most fertile plains plains in the world. Rich provinces, great cities will be your in your power. There will there you will find honor, glory, and riches. So to Italy, will you lack courage or consist constancy? Constancy. Oh my god. Yo, he sounds so like a motivational man. Like he's great. I'm 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 pumped right now. But that's what they want to hear, right? Napoleon has spent two years studying the situation in northern Italy and the history of past wars here. He has developed clear plans on how the campaign must be fought. Now, he will put them into action. Okay, here we go. Napoleon, with 38,000 troops, outnumbers the Piedmontese and the Austrian army. Okay. But if they combine, he will be outnumbered. Right so he must prevent this at all costs. His plan bears all the hallmarks of what will become known as the Napoleonic art of war. Oh, no. A sick. bold, rapid advance, not against the expected target, Genoa, but Dago. Ooh. Here he will occupy. In, in light of recent <clears throat> events, it begs the question, what can we even believe in anymore? Will occupy but this is this is this is getting intense, man, and I, I, I I'm I'm excited to find out. Expect. Come on, you expected target Genoa, but Dago. Here he will occupy the central position, and prize his enemies apart. He knows that when threatened, the Piedmontese will retreat on their capital Turin, the Austrians on Milan. With his enemies divided, unable to support each other. He can defeat each in detail. That's a sick plan. Napoleon's plan will be aided by the fragility of the Austro-Piedmontese alliance. They regard each other with deep distrust after years of rivalry. That sound good, the new Austrian commander, General Beaulieu, is experienced and was once considered energetic, but he is now 70 years old and does not know Italy. He is convinced the French will target Genoa, the port used by the British to supply their coalition allies. So much so, that he rejects Piedmontese plans for close cooperation. Wow. Their troops remain scattered across mountain passes in a general defence against invasion. On the 4th of April, Napoleon moves his headquarters forward to Albenga in preparation for his offensive. But Beaulieu strikes first. Oh, wow. On the 10th of April, Austrian troops take Voltri to disrupt the expected French attack on Genoa. The small French garrison falls back to join Massena's advance guard at Savona. Okay. But Beaulieu's fixation with Genoa is playing into Napoleon's hands. Dago, with its vital crossroads that link the Piedmontese and Austrian armies, is covered by just 8,000 men of Argento's corps. Okay. Mountainous terrain means Beaulieu can only march to Argento's aid via Acqui, wow. more than 20 miles to the north. What's more, Argento has orders to take French positions at Montenotte as a diversion for the attack at Voltri. But the French cling on courageously. Corporal Roache particularly distinguishes himself exposing himself to enemy fire to shoot down on the enemy. His commander, Colonel Rampont, tells his men, here we must conquer or die. A moment which quickly enters French military folklore. Wow. It's the perfect setup for Napoleon. The enemy's attention is focused on Voltri, and Argenteau's corps has been left dangerously exposed. He swings into action, sending La Harpe's division to reinforce Rampont's troops, while Massena makes a tough night march across steep ravines in rain and fog to turn Argenteau's right flank. By dawn, the Austrians are outnumbered, outflanked, and under heavy attack. They retreat in disarray. The thing Napoleon. Is, like, this this guy here, this this uh, from the Austrian like empire, the guy who's controlling that, like he was so focused on the wrong thing. Yeah, it's to say, 
like it's just, that's surely like because so you uh, did Napoleon know that or did he get a bit lucky here? Because like it's just it's very it's very like convenient that it worked out for him that way. Because if if now that guy's like did the initial thing and didn't reject that um position to like join forces in a sense, it probably would have been a whole different story. I feel like there's so many things that couldn't just so far. I feel like two main things that could have just gone left for Napoleon that could have probably derailed this whole campaign, but. That being the second one, and then the first one was like him almost dying in war. But either way, I mean, but I guess you know it wouldn't be a story if, if things like this didn't go his way, anyway. So um, yeah, like it's interesting how it's it's, it's being um painted out. Ian orders Massena to move on Dago, while he turns his attention to the Piedmontese. This is sick. But Augereau's advance gets held up at Cosseria. The old castle is held by Piedmontese and Croatian grenadiers. The French launch frontal attacks into withering fire and suffer hundreds of casualties. When the colonel of the 18th Demi Brigade is killed, a 26-year-old Louis Gabriel Suchet takes over command. I have never seen fire like it, wrote Marmont, Napoleon's aide-de-camp. Despite heroic resistance, the hopelessly outnumbered garrison surrenders the next day. Wow. With Serrurier's division also advancing from the south, Piedmontese commander General Colli has little choice but to abandon his position at Montezemolo. Oh, this is insane. Colli has little choice but to abandon his position at Montezemolo. The same day, under Napoleon's watchful eye, Massena takes Dago. But while La Harpe's division moves off to reinforce Augereau, hungry French troops left in Dago turn to plunder and pillage. No one spots Colonel Vukasovic, a tough Croatian commander, approaching with 3,000 reinforcements. He attacks at dawn, routing the French and retaking Dago with oh, ease. It requires the recall of La Harpe's division and another day of heavy combat before Vukasevich can be driven out of Dago. Wow. A bayonet charge led by 27-year-old Colonel Lan wins particular praise from General Bonaparte. Okay. Napoleon has won three victories in four days. The marches and battles have been gruelling but he has achieved his first objective. The Austrians are regrouping at Acqui and will soon retreat to Alessandria. They can offer no support to the Piedmontese. And so General Colli orders another withdrawal to a strong defensive position behind the Corsalia River. Napoleon orders an immediate attack. Augereau's division on the right, Serrurier on the left. Massena in support. But the French, insane. under heavy fire, struggle to cross the swollen river Imagine. with its steep banks. When Serrurier's troops finally get into San Michele, they immediately begin looting the town what? and are thrown out by a counterattack. What is it with them looting? Despite his success, Colli is still heavily outnumbered and fears encirclement. The following evening, he begins a covert withdrawal to Mondovi. But Napoleon is not deceived by the fake campfires. Patrols confirm his suspicions. The Piedmontese are pulling back. Though his troops are exhausted, wet and hungry, he launches them after the fleeing enemy. Colley's troops are caught before they can establish a new defensive line. Ah. The brave and popular General Dicat is killed. Retreat turns to rout. The French enter Mondovi in triumph, where at last, briefly, they can eat and rest. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure they will love that. Oh, so I'm guessing this is, wow, Napoleon's done a madness, man. And now I guess, that, I feel like this is probably gonna give more confidence to the troops now, because the, the, the two armies which lately attacked you in full confidence now fly before you in terror. Wow, I Napoleon sounds hard, man. Bravo, man, this has been an insane tactical display. General Colley wow. 
His defeated troops, scattered and demoralised, requests an armistice. Napoleon declines, as his troops descend from the mountains into the fertile plain of Piedmont. Destitute and starved, French soldiers now plunder the Italian countryside freely. Brigadier General Joubert is among those frustrated by the men's conduct. Everything would go very well if the soldiers did not abandon themselves to pillage. Not a day passes without some looters being shot. Despite this severity, the mania doesn't stop. The rural folk are arming themselves. Wow. Napoleon condemns such behaviour, but his orders have limited... That's what I'm saying, man. Like, these guys, that's the whole reason why they got kind of done in that other town, because they were too busy pl plundering and looting. Napoleon condemns such behaviour, but his orders have limited impact. Especially as everyone knows Generals Massena and Augereau to be two of the greatest offenders. Really? On the 25th of they April, French troops enter Carrasco, just 30 miles south of the Piedmontese capital, Turin. Meanwhile, General Beaulieu is at long last marching to Piedmont's aid. It's about time. But he is a week late. And when he learns that Piedmont has opened negotiations with the enemy, he withdraws his troops in disgust, planning to wow. take up new positions along the Po River. Austrian troops join in the plunder of Piedmontese villages as they go. Wow. Victor Amadeus III, King of Piedmont Sardinia, sees no option but to accept Bonaparte's terms for an armistice. Piedmont must give up the strategic fortresses at Cuneo and either Alessandria or Tortona, leaving the country virtually defenceless. The final peace treaty, signed three weeks later in Paris, cedes Nice and Savoie to France, and grants free passage to French armies. Napoleon has ended wow. the four-year war with Piedmont in less than three That's weeks. Insane. Soldiers, you have won six victories in a fortnight and conquered the richest part of P Piedmont. Piedmont. But soldiers, you have yet done nothing, but there still remains much to do. Wow. Napoleon, I get me on that. I want to fight for Napoleon right now. The army of Italy has little time to rest on its laurels. Four days later, having received 7,000 reinforcements and fresh supplies, okay. it's on the move again. It's about time. Napoleon plans to invade the rich province of Lombardy, ruled by the Emperor of Austria, and defeat Bolio's army. But first he must cross the Po River, which is closely watched by Austrian forces. It will prove one of Napoleon's most brilliant manoeuvres. Oh, Massena is ordered to make conspicuous preparations to cross the river near Sale, assembling boats and building gun batteries. Meanwhile, Napoleon has formed a new elite brigade. 5,000 grenadiers, carabiniers and chasseurs to act as the army's advance guard under the command of General D'Alemagne. Okay. This force is ordered to march rapidly east to Piacenza and cover 40 miles in just 36 hours. Wow. They are followed by La Arpe's division, then Augereau and the cavalry. Beaulieu receives reports that French troops are moving east and begins to redeploy his forces, oh, don't tell me this while remaining conscious that there are still French troops that might cross the Po as far west as Valencia. Okay. This uncertainty makes it impossible for him to concentrate his forces. Whoa. What's more, he's completely underestimated the scale and speed of Napoleon's move. Whoa. The French advance guard, with Colonel Lann in the lead, crosses the Po on the 7th of May, chasing off Austrian patrols that are the only opposition. By the next morning, the most of La Arpe's and Augereau's divisions and the cavalry are across, consolidating the French bridgehead, while Massena and Sarourier move to the crossing as fast as they can. Men of General Liptai's division are the closest Austrian troops. They take up defensive positions at Fombio, 
but are overwhelmed by the French attack. That evening, Beaulieu's advance guard arrives, expecting to reinforce Liptai. Instead, they blunder into La Harpe's division. In confused night fighting, General La Harpe is shot dead, possibly by friendly fire. Napoleon regards him as one of the army's best generals, and his loss a great blow. Beaulieu, realising that the French have crossed the Po in force, and now threatened to cut him off, orders a rapid withdrawal east. Milan is to be sacrificed. The great fortress of Mantua will be his next refuge. Wow. Yo, Napoleon the French... got past that river with ease, man. I, I was thinking, the rivers seem to be like where uh, seem these armies be setting up camp because I guess it's harder to cross the river, right? All that water and stuff. But yeah, he that whole tactic to go far east and then cross through that way. And oh, that was rude. That was rude. He's passed that with ease and now he's overwhelming. This is crazy. Advance guard is soon in pursuit. On the morning of the 10th of May, they catch the Austrian rear guard at Lodi. Them. French troops chase the Austrians across oh. town and over the town's 200-yard bridge over the river Adda. But when they try to follow, they find the bridge is swept by fire from 14 oh, guns. Wow. Its far end is held by three battalions of Croatian infantry. Wow. Several more battalions and cavalry squadrons are behind them oh, wow. in reserve around 6,500 men in total. Napoleon soon arrives and positions guns to bombard the Austrians on the far bank. An artillery duel rages for much of the afternoon. Oh, this is Napoleon sends Beaumont's cavalry brigade upstream to look for a ford so they can cross the river oh, and flank the Austrian defenses. But he grows impatient. Masena's division has begun to arrive from the south, bringing his strength up to 15,000 men and 30 guns. Napoleon makes a speech to the infantry, taunting them, daring them to take the bridge, then orders them forward. To cries of Vive la République, the hardened 2nd Carabinier Battalion leads the charge. They come under torrential fire from the Austrian guns. But urged on by Napoleon, Berthier, Massena, Lannes and others, French infantry surge across, under and around the bridge. Faced with this irresistible onslaught, the Austrian front line crumbles. And with French cavalry across the river to the north, the rest of the Austrian rearguard begins an orderly oh, withdrawal. I no longer regard myself as a simple general, but as a man to decide the fate of peoples. Hey, Five days after his victory at Lodi, Napoleon that. leads his army into the city of Milan. They are welcomed by cheering crowds. Though in reality, Italians are deeply divided in their attitudes towards the French. After Lodi, French soldiers have a new nickname for their general, Le Petit Caporal, the Little Corporal. It's a term of affection, because he gets his hands dirty, even aiming the guns himself, the job of an artillery corporal. In just a month, Napoleon has transformed a war-weary, dishevelled and demoralised army yeah. into a victorious fighting yeah. force, brimming with esprit de corps and eager for further conquests. While he, in his first campaign, has demonstrated extraordinary energy, mastery of detail, brilliant military intuition, above all, indomitable self-belief. It is this quality that inspires his soldiers to risk their lives for glory, for the Republic, and for the man they will one day acclaim their Emperor. Wow.
Napoleon, you've gained my respect. Who am I though? Who am I? But look, that is insane. What he, how did the epic history guides describe it at the end? Yeah, tactical wizardry, genius. Attention to detail, confidence. Ah, oh, when they charged that bridge in the Battle of Lordia, I think what he said, that is insane. I didn't think they was gonna cross it. I did not think they were gonna cross it. That's a highlight for me. This whole battle here as well, where the Austrian Empire retreated and stuff, and they went after the, the other empire with these guys. That's insane. And then they they tried to sell on that, that campfire thing, but then it ended up Napoleon didn't fall for it. And then he just went like just his intuition, like this brother, Napoleon, it's only the first part, and he's done so much. A 26-year-old man. Commanding an army like that and having so much success, the Italian, French, French, Italian, French army, whatever, having demoralized, disgruntled, just no lack of belief, they go on to do that. That deserves a round of applause. How how he was able to do this is insane. I'm taken aback by how much he was able to do at such a young age. And he seems like so intelligent, man. He seemed like he just has this wit about him that it's set him apart man and this i will i can't wait to see how this 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 story continues guys look let me know what you thought of this uh down below let me know if you're excited for these next upcoming ones like i said i've got a playlist for all of these that i'm gonna do in the description below um so you wonder what i've done up until now if you're watching this later check that playlist guys i'm telling you it'll be in the description so you guys will know exactly what i've done and you're able to watch it in chronological order and of course of course as well like this again it's all coming from epic history's original playlist their, their college order the, the napoleon wars so obviously check that out if you guys want to see their their full stuff original stuff and if you guys want to skip ahead of me and all sorts uh links to that will also be in the description but guys look like i said i've been your boy Jay Flick. this has been napoleon in italy battle of lordia for those of you guys who have made it to this point have been absolutely wonderful and i'll see you guys in peace